Welcome fans and collectors. This is Marvel and DC 379 with another review and today we'll be looking at Marvel Legends Jack-O-Lantern from the Absorbing Man wave. Before I begin, I would like to say that there are multiple and various characters named Jack-O-Lantern but from what I know, this is based on the most recent one. His backstory is that on a Halloween night there was an unidentified boy with a family who was pretty rude and bratty. The supervillain Clue Master kidnapped him. The unidentified boy was scared of him at first but acknowledges him as a father. Clue Master trained him to be an assassin and criminal and the boy developed his own trademark way of killing people. He would open up their heads, remove their brains, place a candle in their empty skulls, hence the motif of a jack-o'-lantern. He would even give himself the alias Jack, so that's the closest thing we'll get to know his real name. Okay, so enough of that. Let's look into the figure. I really like the brown and the dark gray and a bit of black and I love the harness and the belt and you can see his pumpkin bombs deactivated. Proportion wise he's very skinny and tall which I really like to give him more of that creepiness and sinister factor. My favorite part of this figure is the head sculpt. I just love it. It is so gorgeously scary. The yellow for the interior of the mouth and the eyes. The nice shading for the pumpkin. It's like a dark dirty orange. And the beautiful sculpted translucent orange flames. Articulation. Ball jointed head. Hinge shoulders. Bicep swivel. Hinge elbow, there's a swivel on the forearm, nothing for the wrist itself. Hinge torso, swivel waist, hinged hips, upper leg swivel, double hinge knees, and hinged ankles. For accessories, he comes with this nice translucent pumpkin bomb for that flame effect. And I really love that it's an activated pumpkin bomb while you see there's deactivated pumpkin bombs on his belt. I really like that. So it gives it that effect that he's using his pumpkin bombs from his belt. There's this witch broom. Very, very cool with the flame effect at the end. And a sickle. My only complaint about this figure is that it can't hold its accessories very well like it can hold the sickle but see and that applies to the pumpkin bomb and the broomstick which is very unfortunate though I can guess that they did that because they want to pre preserve the sculpt of the hands to make them more creepy and claw like I would have preferred if they gave us alternate hands so they can hold the accessories but if you want your figure to hold its accessories you can use something like super glue or that elastic band. That's an easy fix. So my overall thoughts, it's a mixed bag. I love the sculpt and articulation. I love the accessories but they're very pointless if he can't hold them. But every toy has their good and bad. If you can figure out how to have him hold his accessories, that would be great. So this has been it everybody. This has been Marvel and DC 379. I'll see you in the next video. So until then, Excelsior true believers. Hi, I would like to... <clears throat> Hi, I would like to audition for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The Sparman films in particular. I would like to be the main antagonist. I'm sorry, Mr. J.
Jack, we cannot hire you. Why not? Because we read your resume and it said you like to scoop out brains from your victims? That is highly inappropriate to be something in our films. Good luck finding a job. You can't be the Great Pumpkin from Charlie Brown. Damn it. Language! <laughs>